All right, guys, a little bit of breaking news here today. We've got ourselves a trade that has been in the making for a long time now. Aaron Rodgers is out of the NFC. Aaron Rodgers is out of the NFC. He goes to the New York Jets. We've known this was on the table for a while now, but we didn't know if it was official and actually going to happen until today. So, Aaron Rodgers... Heads to New York, and Green Bay is going to roll with Jordan Love, it looks like, for at least one season. And obviously, this is something that we've all kind of been prepared for for a while now, but there existed the very realistic possibility that Aaron Rodgers just shrugs his shoulders and says, never mind, I'm going to retire now. There may have been a possibility of him just going back to Green Bay and figuring, ah, it's too much trouble now, they don't want to trade me, so I'm not going to push it. There existed the possibility, I guess, of another team like the 49ers getting involved. But it finally happened. The trade went down. And he is going to be introduced as the New York Jets' new quarterback very, very soon here. So obviously this trade had to get done before the draft and probably before the first day of the draft. So there were only a few days left. And it finally got done. So... Here's the uh, breakdown of the trade. Aaron Rodgers goes to the New York Jets along with pick 15. So they also get the Packers first round pick and their fifth round pick this year. Now the Packers get pick number 13. So basically the two teams have swapped their first round picks this year. Uh, the Jets have picked up 15 and the Packers have picked up 13. So the Packers move up a little bit. And the Packers also get a sixth round pick this year, number 207. So basically, you could kind of look at that and go that it doesn't exactly cancel out, but it's pretty close. The uh, swapping 15 for 13 and swapping the fifth for the sixth, that kind of evens out. So it's the rest of the trade that is really the meat of what the Packers got for Rodgers. A... Second round pick, that is in the early to mid part of the second round, in this upcoming draft, in a few days here, and a second round pick next year that becomes a first if Aaron Rodgers plays two-thirds of the snaps, which is obviously very likely unless he gets hurt. I can't imagine he ever gets benched even if he plays really badly, so you're looking at a scenario here where even a moderately healthy Aaron Rodgers is worth that first round pick in 2024 on that conditional. Now, here's the thing. I've always said this, and I believe that it's still the case. Teams generally consider a pick to be a year out to be worth a round less. So the fact that this is a 2024 pick that will probably be a first, it still is in the present day worth basically a second round pick. That's how teams typically do this math. A second round pick next year is worth a third round pick now. So, in essence, the Jets have gotten Aaron Rodgers and the Packers have gotten two second round picks. So, you put those two second round picks together when you consider the fact that the Jets are now going to be considered to be a likely playoff team because they have Aaron Rodgers now on top of their good defense and good receivers and, and good running backs and all these other things they got going for them. You could kind of say Aaron Rodgers was worth one first-round pick. And given what the Packers supposedly wanted for Aaron Rodgers, you could say that's a pretty reasonable trade. That's fair. There was a time as recently as last year when you could have probably traded Rodgers and gotten two first-round picks plus more. You probably could have gotten more for Rodgers than the Seahawks got for Russell Wilson because... Rodgers at that point was coming off an MVP and Wilson was coming off one of the, maybe, maybe honestly, the worst year of his career. And Wilson was worth two firsts and two seconds. So I don't know, maybe the Packers get four first round picks last year for all I know. So obviously the Packers waiting the extra year to trade him has come back and bitten them because they got a lot less than that. But I still have to wonder... Aaron Rodgers for two second round picks that if you were to mash them together in value is probably worth like a 
middle to late first round pick. I mean, we're talking about a guy here who is 39 and he's going to turn 40 before the season ends. So he is just about to turn 40 and he's given the NFL 223 starts. He's given the NFL 530 sacks. So by the end of the year, he's definitely going to be up above 550. He's always been a guy who runs a little bit. So he takes hits that way as well. Hits that aren't necessarily sacks. He's coming off maybe the worst year of his career where he was a full-time starter outside of the years where he got hurt. His completion percentage was down to pre-MVP levels, like back the way he was playing in 2019 and 2018. His yardage was way down from where it usually is. Touchdowns down, interceptions way up. He was more interception prone than he's been in a long time. His QB rating was the lowest of any year where Rodgers was a full-time starter, all the way down at 91. It hadn't been that low since 2006 when he wasn't barely playing. So I'm not really understanding where his value is even here. I understand that he's one of the legends of the game. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks who ever played. I understand that he's this, that, and the other thing, and you're paying a premium because you're getting Aaron Rodgers. Like Aaron Rodgers is a first-round ballot Hall of Famer on skates, four-time MVP, four-time All-Pro, ten-time Pro Bowler. He's a Super Bowl champion. He may be one of the best quarterbacks who ever played. He might be in that top five. Some people think that he is. He's got all kinds of quarterback. I, I don't know if he'll break records in any one particular area, but he may go down as the most statistically efficient quarterback of all time. That is possible. <coughs> so... I understand you're paying a premium for him, but honestly, at this point, you look at Aaron Rodgers and you're, you're you're probably saying to yourself, I hope we can get one good year out of him. I hope we can get one good year out of him. This is not a situation where you can look at him and realistically go, we're going to get three or four really good years out of him. We can feel really comfortable with that. No, I think you're sitting there and you're going, we can probably get one year out of him, and then he, even if he, we get that one year out of him, and then it's like, oh, we're going to have him for a couple more years. No, he might decide, you know what, I'm going to play the I feel like retiring game again, that he played pretty much every offseason with the Packers lately. And one of these offseasons, he might actually mean it. So, I don't know. I'm not really seeing it. I'm not really feeling this one. Um, I don't know how, I understand that Robert Sala is desperate. He's going to lose his job if he doesn't make the playoffs and Rogers is his lifeline that he otherwise doesn't really have. But I mean, again, I, I just have to look at last year and I understand the Packers had problems beyond Aaron Rodgers. They lost receivers. Their offense as a whole just wasn't working that well. The receivers that they got to replace the receivers they lost weren't very good. I understand all these things. But he, as a player, did not look the same. And now he's about to be 40 years old. I don't think it just gets better just because he he wills it to be so because he's happier in New York than he was in Green Bay. But desperation is what it is. And the Jets have a coach that really, really wants to keep his job. And he might be looking at this and going, this is the only way I can keep my job. All right, so let me know what you guys think down below. The significance to the Seahawks at the end of the day is Aaron Rodgers is out of the conference. I don't know how much I really care. It's not like we played the Packers this year, and it's not like Rodgers lit the world on fire last year. In fact, his poor play in a particular game last season helped the Seahawks get into the playoffs. But at least the Packers didn't get bailed out with some ridiculously huge uh, draft package for it, which they didn't deserve. All right. See you guys later. Should be live on Twitch later tonight. Go Hawks. And the saga is over.